Good day friends, welcome back to Everyday Life with Cecilia. Today we're going to continue our trip through Waterton Lakes National Park. Um, today our plan is to go through the town site a little bit and talk about some of the developments that have happened there since the fire, but also just in the last few years there's been quite a bit of development. Uh, we also want to go up to um, the Prince of Wales Hotel, the hotel that overlooks the town site of, of Waterton, and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, as well. But uh, first, we would like to head up the Akamina Highway towards uh, Cameron Lake. Cameron Lake is the primary source of water for Cameron Falls, which we saw earlier, and um, it's one of the it's one of the larger um, and uh, more spectacular lakes in, in Waterton, aside from the Waterton lakes themselves. So let's uh, head on up the highway. Something you'll notice around the town site and even a little bit as we head up the Akamina Highway here, there are still some trees that are alive on this lower portion uh, of the park. Um, either the fire didn't get this far or um, there was some firefighting that happened to save some of those trees. As we get up into the little bit higher elevations, you can see that um, the number of trees that are still alive are diminishing drastically. Uh, there's still an occasional stand of, of living trees, but for the most part, um, this valley was one of the hardest hit. Uh, the most uh, devastating part of the fire was in this, in this valley. Coming up on the trailhead to uh, Crandall Lake. Uh, so this is one of the most obvious signs of change since the fire. The road was pretty much destroyed and had to be rebuilt. And while they, while they were rebuilding it, they also planned a little bit better for uh, additional parking for trailheads. Uh, so there's a lot of hiking trails along uh, this stretch of the highway and uh, these are all very popular hiking spots in the summer as well as the winter and and so uh, having extra parking there is going to be a huge improvement to traffic flow but also to safety and and to convenience This is the trailhead to uh, the Lynham Lakes uh, hiking trail. Um, again, you can see quite a, quite a huge improvement in terms of uh, parking. This is uh, the trailhead to Roll Lakes, Upper and Lower Roll Lake. Um, also a very very popular spot in the winter and as well as the summer and uh, and so they really went all out here for um, lots of parking uh, in the winter they plow uh, the Akamina Highway only about two-thirds of the way up to um, Cameron Lake and they leave the last stretch open for uh, cross-country skiers and snowshoers so uh, the road makes a nice pathway for them to easily ski and snowshoe that stretch from from here up to uh, the lake and here uh, boy the the amount of parking that they have here now compared to um, uh, before the fire is, is pretty pretty impressive 
Um, I didn't count the spots, but uh, you can see there's there's a lot of parking. It'll be interesting to see what this area looks like in the summertime if that uh, parking will still be available. But, so you can see there's the barrier up front there. Um, the road is closed and this is where the, the snow plows stop. So at this point we'll turn around and head back down to Waterton Valley and uh, the town site and the hotel. So here's another example of a frozen waterfall in Waterton. It's not uh, unofficially a waterfall, that is to say in the summertime uh, there's no water actually flowing here. Um, but you can see they also have uh, installed some kind of uh, avalanche mitigation uh, just uh, on the other side of the road there. Um, there's, there's quite a drop off and those are large steel girders kind of like a snow fence that uh, hopefully um, prevents any kind of uh, heavy uh, avalanche activity from coming up on the road or destroying the road. It's a little sad to see all the dead trees, all the charred trees, um, but uh, you have to realize it's part of the natural cycle of a forest. Forest fires are a natural occurrence and what they help uh, do is uh, regenerate the forest. Uh, so uh, in a couple of years there will be all new growth here. These trees will fall down and decay and uh, put nutrients back into the soil and new trees will shoot up and um, it will take some time but uh, um, a new forest will be standing here eventually. Here's a good example of where along the side of the road uh, park personnel have actually gone in and cut down some of the trees. All you see there are some stumps. I imagine that's probably so that um, the trees don't fall down into the onto the road and cause any kind of a road hazard. So as we come back down into uh, the Waterton Valley area, you can see Upper Waterton Lake there. It looks frozen solid as far as we can see from here. Um, I imagine um, all, all three of the lakes are mostly frozen. We're also back down into an area where you can see the trees are nice and green and we're obviously spared from the fire. On the right there you can see from a nice high vantage point the, the town of Waterton. Um, it, uh, it can't grow too much because it's bounded on uh, all sides by uh, water and or mountains and so it hasn't grown uh, in terms of size but it's definitely been more developed over the years. As we come into the town site area, you'll see up here on the left um, new construction of um, hotels, of hotel rooms. Um, oh, and look, there's more animals. Cool. So as we come into the town of Waterton proper, um, you'll see some uh, recurring themes that I've talked about already and that is uh, much more improved uh, parking. I think they've taken the time where the park was kind of um, down because of the fire to uh, really improve some of the amenities in town and parking was definitely one of them. I mentioned in the previous episode that the, the park visitor center was burned down uh, during the fire. Well, this is the site and the construction of the new visitor center. Um, it is uh, very, very large in comparison to the previous one. Um, you'll see that um, it takes up uh, an entire block. Um, 
It looks like they're going to have some outdoor activity space or a park or something attached to the center as well. And so um, it'll be interesting to see. They were working on it the whole time we were there, um, and that was a weekend. So I'm, I'm assuming they're looking for a early bay opening uh, when the park opens officially. As long as I've been coming to the park, there have always been private residences, um, cabins, whatever you want to call them, in the park. Uh, again, not a lot, and there's not a lot of, of land in which to expand. But what I've noticed in the last 10 years, and even more particularly the last five years, is the, um, the size and scale and probably uh, the monetary value of the cabins has definitely gone up substantially. There, there used to be, and you can see a couple here, quite small, very modest um, residences, but now people are spending a lot of money here. This is kind of like the main street uh, in Waterton. Uh, it's where the majority of the retail shops are, uh, some of the hotels, but uh, it's mostly retail shops and or restaurants. Um, in the winter time, this whole area is pretty much boarded up and closed. There's not a lot of activity down here. Uh, there's just not enough volume of tourists to, uh, to make it worthwhile. The RCMP detachment and uh, of course the liquor store, those are open year round as well. So there are a few places that you can stay year-round. Uh, there's uh, three or four hotels that do uh, stay open all year and provide um, at least basic services. Um, I'm not sure how extensive food services is, but accommodation is definitely uh, available throughout the year. This is the temporary park visitor center until the new one is completed. So our last stop today is going to be at uh, the Prince of Wales Hotel. This is the park's most recognized landmark. It is um, a, a real icon. It's been used in promotion of Waterton for ever. Um, it, you see a picture of this hotel and you say, ah, Waterton. It's a seven story wooden structure it began construction in August of 1926, and it was completed um, and opened in July of 1927. It, um, it was designated as a National Historic Site in 1992. And uh, in future episodes, we'll, we'll delve more deeply into the history and the significance of Prince of Wales Hotel in Waterton. 
you can see that it's obviously closed for winter. Um, winter is the time they use to uh, do major renovations and upgrades and maintenance and um, keep it in tip-top shape. Well, thank you for joining us for this short trip to Waterton. We hope you enjoyed um, some of the scenery here. As I mentioned before, this won't be the last time this year we'll go to Waterton. Uh, we go there very regularly and we'll show you um, the different moods of Waterton. Bye now. <laughs>